So we have a question to ask our viewers, obviously the panel as well. What responsibility, in your opinion, do parents have when it comes to turning in their child for being a potential school shooter? Think about that. Well, here's an example. Here's a story that blew my mind. A mother in Michigan had this dilemma after finding her 17-year-old son's journal, which detailed a plan for an attack on April 20th 2020, which is the anniversary of the Columbine school shooting. Mm. He talked about starting at 5 a.m. by killing his mom and her boyfriend. Here's what she said in a new interview about her decision to report him to authorities. I have a lot of friends. I had a lot of friends that have children there. It wasn't just about me and him at that point. It was about a whole school. Hundreds of people. If there's a possibility to save even one one person, one child, I think it's worth it. Wow, police arrested her son and he ended up pleading guilty to a felony. He was banned from returning to the high school he allegedly planned to attack. He's now 20, working, doing well, but reportedly still resents his mother for turning him into police. He's also being treated for depression. So uh, you're shaking your head out. What are you thinking? I mean, she did the right thing. And, it, you know, Sam, this is a weird kind of uh, parallel to draw, but I thought a lot about uh, that story we covered a couple months back with the woman that decided to put marijuana in her wedding guest's food. And I didn't think about her. I thought about the caterer because the caterer in a weird way is also implicated in this crime that she was committing. And so was the parent in this situation. If you are aware that a murder is going to take place, no different in, than if you're aware that a poisoning is going to take place, whatever the, the repercussions are, you're not going to get as bad as the person that, that created this plan, but you are implicated. You are the person driving the getaway car. You are part of this. And I think once parents start facing a little jail time, we won't get as many uh, text messages. Erica, remember the kid in Michigan and yeah. the parent was like, LOL, oh, yeah. don't let them find your gun. I almost came through this television screen. I was so mad. So once parents like that stop finding it funny because they know jail time's coming, I think we'll see a, a sharp decrease. Yeah, I think we're in a position where the law has hasn't caught up with what's ha actually happening in society, and mm -hmm. that's the reason why a lot of these parents haven't been implicated. I would imagine, I'm not a parent, but I would think that you live with someone, they are your child, you notice behaviors, there are going to be definitely red flags at some point. What was the catalyst for her reading mm. his journal? So if that was something that she identified as a parent, more parents need to be a little bit more vigilant or a lot more vigilant, depending on the nature of your child and their mental health or their struggles or their anger or whatever you're seeing to check in on your child. There's just too many people out there who feel like their hands are, you know, it wasn't me, but it's like, no, you produce this. You produced it, you harbored it, you aided it and abetted it, and now your child is responsible for murder. Well, he had some run-ins with the law. He also, she found some bomb-making materials that she believed underneath his mm. bed. So red flags were happening. That's probably what inspired her to read his journal and thank God, because that was a manifesto, let's be honest, or it could have very well been. What would you do? Yeah, you have to do the right thing, right? As sad as it sounds, you want to protect your child from everything, including the law or prison, things like that. But if your child is ill, you take them to the hospital. This is a mental illness. It's not like they woke up and they were mad at Ted at school and they just went crazy. There's signs, there's red flags on every single one of these school shootings that we have. We need to start implicating the parents, just like you said. Welcome back, buddy. You uh, said that beautifully. You, man. Love you, man. And it, there needs to be repercussions. I say that about everything. There's need to be harsher repercussions for the parents if they knew, because if my child is sick, it has a mental illness, God forbid, some sort of disease, I want to help them. Right. No matter what it is, I want to help them get help. Thank you for so saying you that. So you right. want to help them before they do something drastic and now the rest of their life is ruined. By not helping them, you're actually being a worse parent because worse. you're not getting them help and now your child is going to do something drastic and be in jail for the rest of their lives and you're going to have to live with that guilt. Amen, Jeff. You just said everything that was in my mind because at the, at the end of the day, she's saving her son's life too. We don't know if he he would have, you know, killed himself in his journal. He did write that he wanted to create as much mass carnage as possible and then kill himself. Um, we don't know if he would have been killed by a police officer or locked up and then living with that shame and guilt for the rest of his life. Right. So yeah, she saved his son's life. Yeah. Yeah. So she did the right thing. She's a fantastic parent. Erica, you brought up some of the warning signs. I just want to share this with our viewers because you never know if someone's watching, if this could 
save a life. Okay, so some of the warning signs that we found pathway when people plan details for their attack. So like the mom saw the materials underneath the bed. If you find weapons, if you find guns, details like that. Social that's a, media. That's another one. So that's one red flag. The other red flag, sharing intent on social media. Start to peruse their social media. See if they have any intent to make an attack or if they're posting photos that you feel is not sitting right. That is a red flag. Another one, identification. When your child all of a sudden has this dark identity, and I'm not going to paint with a broad brush and say all of a sudden they're into Marilyn Manson. No, I used to listen to Marilyn Manson. Mm -hmm. So you see your child change and they're starting to idolize like this child did mass shooters that's a red flag uh, direct threat this child in the journal direct threat i'm going to kill my mom and her boyfriend and then aggression and then also uh, i think a lot of people need to realize that novel aggression is some of those early signs like harming animals right right that's a major sign of psychopathy the, that of a uh, uvalde kid yes he, he was harming he was carrying cats. around bags of dead cats yep which i would think yes erica yep. uh the kid from parkland was not allowed to bring a book bag to school i mean the the, the kid that shopped at michigan school was in a disciplinary meeting that morning with yeah. his parents so the good news is we've identified them now that just like uh in a, in a, it was a black sheep yeah you've, uh, you've identified the problem now let's take the care pine of it. perfume the, yeah so like let's <laughs> the, not to right. make light of this no, but like honestly like yep we see we every all these adults have seen this so we can right see the red that. flags are there the right. red flags are there see and something, as a parent, say something you have to do even something if it's about your it. child right amen